Hi there, Bob from Insidium here. It's Top Tip Tuesday, and on today's video, we're going to be taking a Nexus Fluid Sim, although this will work with X Particles Fluids as well, and we'll be making scene objects dynamic so they can interact with that fluid water body, and we'll be using XP Dynamics to do that. So let's start the clock and begin. In our scene then, we've got this water simulation with a static life ring here. We want this to float on our liquid. So let's just look at how this is set up. We've got a primitive cube in the default settings with an XP collider tag on with a normal set to inside. So that's trapping the particles inside it. We have an emitter and in the object tab, the emitter is set to box emission mode. In the emission tab, it is a shot emission hexagonal type with a particle radius of two. This radius is very important. We'll come on to that in a bit. We have a default gravity. We have an NX turbulence in there giving us this noisy uh, movement. And the reason we've got our fluid solve is because we have an NX fluids object in. This is set to SBH mode. And the only thing uh, that is not default is we've upped the substeps from the default three to four. And that's giving us this nice um, uh, simulation. So we want to get our torus to float on the surface of our water. So we're going to use XP Dynamics. Let's go to the torus and highlight it. We'll go to Tags, Extensions, Insidium Tags, and bring in an XP Dynamics. Here's our Dynamics tab, and here are the settings. Now what this is going to do, by default, it's going to birth dynamic particles on the vertices of our object. But before we pre uh, press play and birth these, it's very important that the radius of those particles that we're going to birth are exactly the same size as the radius of our fluid particles. Um, so let's just, before we do anything, go down to the radius in our tag options and put it down to 2. That's what we had in the water body emitter as well. Now, when we're using an SBH fluid solve, which is the mode that we're using, if we go to fluids, look, we've got it set on SBH. Every particle must be the same radius value, Otherwise, the sim will become unstable. So we have to have everything set at two centimeters. Let's go back to our dynamic particles. So if I just go forward a frame, you'll see if we dolly in that we have a particle that's been born on every vertex of our geometry. Let's come back out again, hit play. And yet, yeah, look, it's kind of interacting with that surface and it's kind of dragged along the, um, the object for the ride. One thing that we want to do though is we want to make sure that this object isn't kind of deformed in a soft body type way by these dynamic particles and we can do that just we just want the movement the rotation and the positional movement so in our dynamic tab let's just switch off update points which won't allow those points to be moved in any way and now it's going to be a, a really nice perfectly kind of rigid object. So what we want to do now is we want a bit more control because at the moment it's not really floating, is it? It's got the same fluid value as our water body. So it's just kind of being kind of moved along by it, which looks good, but we've got no control of whether it sinks or floats. So the way we're going to do that is we are going to set different fluid properties for the water body particles than our dynamic ones. And the way we do that is with an NX fluids tag. So first of all, let's put one of those in our water body. So here's our water body emitter, tags, extensions, insidium. We want to put an NX fluids tag on there. Here it is. And this enables us to set our fluid settings per emitter. So yeah, we, look, we want it on SPH. And actually with the water body ones, we'll just leave everything default. But now we want to add the same tag to our dynamic particles. But at the moment, we can't because it's all the particles are being born under the hood. We haven't got an emitter, but we can use an emitter instead. And the way we do that is pretty simple. It's like loads of other objects that can create emitters in X particles. If we come down the settings, look, under the properties, we can add an emitter. So let's do that. Add emitter. Here it is at the top of our object manager. We'll just bring it down. Let's call this emitter dynamic. All right. And all we need to do, we can actually, uh, let's make this display of our emitter invisible. We don't need to see that. We'll go to the display tab of our new emitter and just make sure draw emitter is switched off. Yep. Yeah. 
And then, look, we can just copy this tag by holding control, copying it down. And let's go into that tag. So now this is going to work in exactly the same way, but we're able to put this tag on our emitter. Let's just go to our emitter dynamic and make it invisible because we don't need to see the particles. But let's go to our tag options and look, if we want these to float, we need to reduce their, uh, their density. So let's put the density down to 100. And if this is working as we hope, it'll float to the surface. Yep, yeah, there it is, look, bobbing along on the surface. Excellent. One more thing we can do, actually, is our turbulence is affecting both our dynamic and our water body particles. Actually, all we want to do with the turbulence is to get it to move the water around and get the water to move our dynamic particles around. So we can just go to our emitter dynamic, modifiers, and just disclude the turbulence. Look, it's switched off in there. And now the turbulence is only affecting the fluid particles in our water body, but that in itself is then moving our uh, safety ring around. Let's go back to our emitter dynamic tag. Look, if we put this on 3000, we're going to sink it to the uh, bottom of our water body, put it back to 200, and then it floats back up to the surface. Excellent. So that is how um, we can create dynamic objects by using the X particles dynamics tag and have all that working within an NX simulation.